So, how are you guys doing today? Good? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes. We're both doing well. Had a busy few days of promo, obviously ahead of the uh, the album release, which is three, two weeks away now? Three it comes weeks. out on October 21st First. First here. here. Yes. Are you feeling ready for, for everyone to, to finally kind of hear it? Yeah, we're now. very excited for people to, to hear the new music and hopefully they enjoy it. So with your, um, kind of with the approach for this album, um, was, was it quite different going into the studio this time around or with, did you try anything new uh, songwriting wise that maybe you hadn't tried before? I mean songwriting for us is always a new experience as we're always trying to push ourselves forward artistically w with what we were creating at the time of any given records creation. That was the same with Burials. Um, what was markedly different for us this time was the amount of time we spent in the studio in relation to modern recording. Yeah, we actually tried to do it in six weeks, um, which is, you know, we hadn't made a record in that short of amount of time since the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and we pulled it off. We did. It worked out very well. We only recorded 13 songs, so the songs that you hear on burials showcase the entirety of our, our recording process. So there was no, so nothing, nothing was cut out. It was like these are the songs. And Before we went in the studio, we had, we had to decide exactly what was going to be on the album uh, because we knew that we only had six weeks to record it. Did you find that quite? Um, almost, was there a kind of liberation to that compared to kind of having to pick between things? Was there a bit more kind of the having have, going into the studio knowing exactly what record we were recording as far as which tracks were going to be on it was liberating in that respect because there was there was no mystery yeah. at that point as to which songs were going to make the record making the decision prior was no less difficult than it was in the past when we would make that decision after we've tracked all the songs but um, it least, was nice to know yeah I mean at least we didn't have the you know have to choose between you know completed songs correct. that sounded great. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you didn't have any kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of a, Babies to Kill, I think was the impression. You know, you didn't have to get rid of it, anything you were kind of... I mean, we did, bad. we, there were a lot of songs that uh, we loved that didn't make... We killed the, a lot of babies. Yeah, we killed <laughs> a lot of babies, to use the, the analogy. Um, kittens, let's go with kittens. Yes. We killed Puppies, a lot of, we kittens. Killed a lot of kittens. Um, because I would care less about killing babies than I would kittens, really. A lot of babies need to die. Yeah. Um, but that process happened early on. So there are songs, you know, there's you know, songs, there's a song that Hunter and I really loved, one of my favorite tracks that we wrote that didn't make the recording session. Killed. Um, killed. Kitten killed. But uh, that's part of the process always. So with your, um, with the, with I think it's two songs so far that everyone's been able to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, you put out two music videos before and obviously the, mm -hmm. the, you've done a lot with the visuals on the build up to, to mm -hmm. the release of this album um, and obviously you guys kind of pre predate having to kind of build these social media mm -hmm. campaigns and all that, that kind of uh, almost I guess modern approach to mm -hmm. kind of releasing an album and things like that. Like, do, you, do you enjoy bringing that visual aspect in for the, the, the build up? Is it quite different from what you had to do? Um, being able to being able to add a, a visual element to what we're doing is something that we've always enjoyed and we had the forum of music videos to do that in the past and this time we had the ability to preface what we were doing musically on burials with the vignettes that we created uh, prior to the release of the first song that we sent to fans which was I Hope You Suffer and we worked very closely with the surround gentlemen in New York who are great artists, great directors to create those shorts um, that, that led up to what we were doing and then they went on to direct the video for the song that we sent to fans which was I Hope You Suffer and we really felt that it, it captured all of the mood of what we were doing and what was to come on Burials very very well. Is that something you're going to continue through uh, once the album's been released as well? Are you going to try and uh, continue the, the linking together of the different songs with, with visuals still? Certainly whenever we make a music video, we like the video to have continuity with the tone of the song and the theme of the song. Yeah, I mean, there will be continuity in that it all relates to the same body of music, but um, but I don't think there will be a continuing narrative or um, from the pre-existing videos. And were there any particular reasons that, that you chose uh, I Hope You Suffer as, as the first track to, to give out to fans for this release? 
we wanted to give something to the fans who've been waiting for music, and uh, we sent them I Hope You Suffer before we released the video for it publicly, and uh, before we, we sent the song out to, to the public, and we felt that I Hope You Suffer was a song that represented the general tone and mood of, of the record very well, so that those fans were given an insight on, onto that, uh, onto that tone, into that tone. Are there any, uh, have, there, have there been any bands that have influenced the, obviously you said you had to go in and really kind of pick your, your songs for the record, mm -hmm. but were there any bands while you were writing in, in general that you've, you've listened to recently and the, oh, since the last album cycle almost that have, have kind of had an influence on, on your work on Burials, do you think? No, there, there have never been bands that really directly influence what, what we're doing. We all listen to so many different types of music and yeah. um, all of what we have grown up listening to or we listen to um, currently, you know, affects who we are as people, but there's never been any bands that directly influence what we write, and that's the case on Burials as well. So it's the kind of, as soon as you're in, uh, in, in the rehearsal room or sitting down to write, write parts, it's kind of, every other thing just kind of goes mm -hmm. out, out of your minds and you kind of focus on, have what, we're focus on yeah. Yeah, what we're doing and focus on each other. Yeah. I mean, is there anything in particular that, that you really wanted to achieve with the, the themes of the record lyrically or anything? But some of that focus, we're never, when we sit down to write, we, we don't look to achieve a specific thing. We don't look to write a, a specific type of record. It's, it's not really discussed in those terms. Um, naturally, what comes out of us and what uh, flows is what we gravitate towards. And as, as we write further and further, um, you know, songs elevate themselves and, and tones tend to relate to each other and it directs the, the mood of the greater greater body of songs that, that we are creating and um, that, that's, that was the case with, with Burials as, as well. Do you think there's, uh, are there any particular tracks from the record, aside from the two that you've already kind of unleashed and let people kind of get the taste of so far, are there, are there any tracks that uh, you can't wait for, for fans to hear? Are there anyone that really stand out that you're really excited about everyone getting to hear them? For, for us, all the, all the songs are equally important. Um, the, the record's very dynamic and it's, it's, each song is, is unique and holds a specific importance to us, uh, as, as is typical when we choose what we're going to actually record. We choose songs that we all you know, very much like. So um, there, are, there isn't a particular track that means more to me um, on the record more so than the other and that includes the, the single and that it also includes the, the track that we released earlier um, I hope you suffer there they're all part of the whole yeah I, I consider just one thing an album yeah, yeah I can't album. wait for people to hear, hear the, the record thing yeah the record I, I mean it's other certainly people who have a distance from it who you know as we created it we we were very close to it I imagine others will will be able to pick favorites but we've never been able to do that so obviously you're you're over in the UK doing some some promo, obviously ahead of the race. So obviously it's quite an important place for you guys to. You feel you need to kind of come and and do. And you've obviously played here many many times over the course of of your history as a band. Uh, is do you think the UK and Europe in general? Is it do you enjoy kind of coming out of the US? And uh, are there any differences between touring here and touring at home? Do you think? Honestly, the differences between touring overseas and touring at home are, are very personal. We're lucky to have very passionate fans uh, all over the world, and um, certainly the fan base here in the UK has been very strong since our first visits over here, which is very, very yeah. nice. Um, we have a larger fan base here um, and did so immediately than we have or have had in in other other countries that we had played for the first time. So it's always nice to to come to the UK because um, there's there's a, a very very strong fan base. But when you bring it down to the level of playing the shows, the shows are very similar wherever we go. Whether we're playing to 300 people or 3,000 people or 30,000 people, if those people are our fans, because they um, they all bring a really great energy to the show, no matter what country.